How's it going, Collierville High School families? Mario Hoke here with Communications. I'm in the Pickler Auditorium at Collierville High School. Today we're gonna to be discussing what it's going to look like, not only for students, but families and also staff during the new school year with our COVID-19 period. Today I have Mr. Jones, Principal of Collierville High School. How's it going, Mr. Jones? Just fine. Thank you so much, Mr. Holt, for having us here and be able to speak to our family. Absolutely, and who do we have with us today? Well, I'll let my administrators introduce themselves. My name is Tamara Buckner. My name is Brett Heinrich. And my name is Hallie Ross. Fantastic, thank you guys for all being here with us today. I appreciate it. So real quick, you know, there's been a lot of you know, behind the scenes work that's been happening. We closed our schools in March of 2020. Talk to me what that's looked like from really a high level standpoint um, as it relates to operations, custodial, nutrition. What's going on in the school which, is, which will prepare us to open our doors this coming Monday, August 17th? Well, since we uh, closed our doors back in March, uh, what has gone into place is we've had our teachers that have gone through training uh, when it comes to teams to be able to uh, meet with our students virtually uh, throughout the school year. Our, team, our teachers have gone through Schoology training as well. Uh, when it comes to our custodial workers, uh, our, our district, they have uh, been working on cleaning our building, disinfecting, also bringing in some supplies that teachers may be able to use throughout the school year to continue to disinfect throughout the year. Our cafeteria our staff, they've gone through different types of training to prepare for our students as they begin to come through the cafeteria, going through the lines, being able to social distance at the exact same time, uh, but making sure that we feed all of our students in a timely manner. Fantastic. So tell me some things that are really important that uh, parents need to, need to know so that they can prepare their children as they, um, as they either walk in the doors Monday or they're actually working virtually. Talk to me about some important items that families need to be uh, considerate about. Some of the things that I would say, and I'll let Ms. Ross join in as well, but uh, some of the things that our parents need to uh, be aware of, uh, as you know, we're going to have a schedule in which some of our students are coming through in hybrid, and an, uh, another set of our students are going to be uh, virtual. I'll let Ms. Ross talk to you just a little bit about what hybrid is gonna look like versus virtual. So if I'm Ms. Ross and I have my first period class and it has 25 students, all the students are in there together. I may have 10 students that are hybrid with the last name A through K, and they're joining me in person on Monday and Tuesday. And then I have another 10 students that have the last names L through Z, and they're joining me in person on Wednesday and Thursday. And then I also have five more kids that are virtual the entire week, all five days. So all classes, all, all students, regardless of how they are choosing to attend school this year, are still on my roster, and they still attend Carville High School, and they're still taught by me, one big dragon family together. Awesome. So, it, so talk to me about if I'm a uh, virtual student, are my course selections going to be different than my hybrid uh, students uh, that are in the school? One of the reasons why we decided to shift uh, virtual students out of the Carnival Virtual Academy and back to Carnival High School, taught by Carnival High School teachers, is so that we can give them more options uh, to take the classes that we offer to all students here at Carnival High School. Unfortunately, there were some dual enrollment courses due to post-secondary requirements and the need to be on campus and get a certain number of hours that we were not able to offer those students who chose virtual, but we are very pleased uh, with the fact that we are able to offer a vast majority of our dual enrollment programs to all students and almost all of our AP classes as well. Uh, and so that is really another reason why we shifted away from Carnival Virtual Academy and back to having all students taught by Carnival High School teachers. Fantastic. So my understanding is that it really what has been communicated to our families as it relates to the course offering, that is what is going to be available as we open our doors Monday. There's, there's no changes. Those students know these are the courses that are going to be offered uh, no matter what the uh, channel of, of curriculum they are um, they're going through. Is and that, that is correct? That is correct. And one more thing that I'd like to remind our uh, parents and our students, uh, students may be wondering, uh, of course, because typically they get their, their schedule. Uh, during orientation, uh, but because of social distancing and not having large crowds in the building, we did send out a message through uh, Blackboard just letting our parents, our students know that uh, Power School will be uh, available for them uh, come Friday, where they'll be able to log on, see their schedules, and know exactly uh, the classes that they're signed up for, where those classes meet, all of those great details. And those students will follow those schedules 
Uh, if there are any type of changes, uh, any type of changes that they'll need, uh, they have been informed to uh, follow that schedule until their counselor can get to them uh, in order to make those necessary changes. But students will be uh, able to see their schedules online uh, come Friday. So what does Friday look like for students? Dr. Buckner, you want to talk about Friday? So the purpose of Friday is to give teachers and students an opportunity to all come together yet virtually. So although we won't have any physical students in the building, teachers will still be in the building and they'll be logging on to Teams and students will be able to join. They may get many lessons. They can have check-ins about any questions they have from assignments. And it's just a way to connect with the teacher and feel like you're still one big happy family. Awesome. So is Friday an option for students or is it a requirement that they are actually logging on? No, Friday is a requirement. Uh, and our teachers are going to probably be delivering new lessons that day. So it is, uh, we expect all students to follow their bell schedule. As it is, all alpha ranges, virtual, every student is following their bell schedule that day, checking in with their teachers. Uh, teachers are going to communicate which platform is going to be the best for them in that particular class that day. So pay attention to your email, your Schoology updates. Uh, for which platform is going to be used by each teacher on Friday. Gotcha. So for the students that are physically with us Monday through Thursday, depending on if you're group A or group B, what does uh, lunch look like for those students? Are they actually going to our beautiful cafeteria or are they having the, uh, their lunches at specific periods in, in classroom? So I'll start off talking just a little bit about what lunch is going to look like and then I'll let uh, Mr. Heinrich talk to you just a little bit about the cafeteria and the setup and the the structure there. Uh, our students will be permitted to, well students, you will be permitted to eat in the cafeteria as well as outside. Uh, based on the fact that we're already on a hybrid uh, schedule, uh, that's already going to cut down on the number of students that are going to be in our building to start with. Uh, so we should be able to accommodate, accommodate all of our students uh, in the cafeteria as well as uh, in the uh, outdoor courtyard. Yeah, just to kind of echo what Mr. Jones said, uh, we are going to be able, based on uh, the number of students that are coming uh, on Monday and Tuesday groups, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, balances out to where we should be able to fit all students into the cafeteria and abide by social distancing guidelines. This is going to be presented to students in first period on the first day of school uh, in a PowerPoint keynote that teachers are going to review. But there is going to be designated spots at every round table and every long table where students can sit. Uh, students are not going to be able to get up and move around because we want to make sure that we control the flow of traffic uh, and make sure we keep students as separate and safe as possible. Uh, but again, this is going to be reviewed with students and there will be monitors in the cafeteria helping make sure that all of those things happen as well as administrators and SROs. Uh, so we are prepared for lunches to be as normal as possible, but also as safe as possible. Awesome. So with the recent announcement uh, from, the, from the state level, but then also Shelby County Health Department saying that uh, a requirement is the cloth facial mask, what will, that, uh, what will that look like as it relates to mass breaks and then uh, mobility you know, in a high school and even at the middle school level? Our kids are, are transitioning throughout the entire day. What will mass breaks look like? And then really, what's the requirement of our students uh, as it relates to their, to their mask? First and foremost, uh, every student, every teacher will be required to wear a mask, of course. Uh, if you uh, paid attention to our district re reopening plan, uh, families already know that. Uh, but our students will have the opportunity to have mask breaks uh, throughout the day uh, in certain uh, when they're when they're moving throughout sometimes with uh, teachers as well as in the cafeteria. Awesome. And then what does the volume look like? I mean, Collierville High School is just massive. We, we know that. Um, what is the volume going to look like be, now because of hybrid, but then also with the virtual model? So we're, we're definitely decreasing the volume. But what, you know, high level, what are we looking at foot traffic wise you know, Monday through Thursday? We are looking at about a thousand students a day, just give or take a little bit between Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Thursday, but it is about a thousand students in person a day. Awesome. So really, our our um, our volume is a little bit over three thousand. So we're we're actually bringing it down to a thousand. So we are able to to be very mindful and and considerate of social distancing. Fantastic. Is there anything else that you think we need to mention or, or really uh, convey to our families this school year? Uh, I just want to say to all of our families, all of our students. Uh, we just simply cannot wait to have our kids back in the building. Uh, it seems like it's been so long. It seems like March was so long ago, uh, but we're so excited to have our students back in the building, so excited to have them back into the flow of learning. Uh, as we know, that is the most important thing, and we can't wait to have our students back here with us, joining us uh, to be able to have a successful school year. 
whatever that may be, uh, uh, we're going to continue to uh, work within the guidelines of our Shelby County Health Department uh, with our with Carville Schools and what our state recommends uh, through in, with respect to social distancing. Uh, but we just want to let our families know, our students know, we cannot wait to have you back here at Carville High School. Fantastic. And so obviously education is a team approach. We need to be uh, working alongside of one another through this entire process. What's the best way if, if students and families um, have questions or concerns this school year, what's really the best way to be reaching out to the administration at the high school level? Well, I would say that uh, anytime a parent has a question, uh, if it's academics to start with, uh, your counselor, your child's counselor is the best person to go to. Uh, we've already put out information about uh, our grade level administrators, uh, which grade levels they're, they're over. So parents can always email uh, the grade level administrators. Of course, you can always email me as the principal. Uh, but parents, uh, if nothing else, I do want you to understand that uh, if I can convey one message, uh, just to let you know that this is one of the biggest shifts that we uh, in education have ever uh, gone through especially when you think about even years back in terms of education, this is going to be one of the greatest shifts ever uh, with our teachers now not only teaching within the classrooms, but also going virtually. Parents, I just want to say to you, uh, we need your support more than ever uh, to remind our students about social distancing, uh, but also we need your understanding and we need your grace as our teachers move through and be able to navigate actually how to uh, use uh, virtual um, and with respect to teams uh, to make sure that we deliver instruction effectively. Uh, so we just need to uh, be able to work together and cooperate with one another in order to make this a success, uh, successful school year for everyone. Fantastic. Again, we're at Collierville High School. Um, first day of school for the, for the district is Monday, August 17th. We're super excited to have all of our students and families back. Uh, looking forward to seeing you all. Take care and have a great day. Go Dragons.